the start or shall we wait for another five minutes? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> today's topic is transposition of the great arteries. It's a block of uh, six sessions that will cover, I, I hope, all the topic. And uh, Vidya uh, presenting today's first part of that uh, anatomy, physiology, um, embryology, and echo. So please, Vidya, you can start. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows who I am. And for those who, of you who don't know me, I'm Vidya, one of the cardiology registrars. Um, so as uh, Oleg uh, said, uh, this is uh, a few blockbuster of uh, the few uh, um, topics that we are discussing uh, in the last few months. Um, and I am going to be talking a bit about uh, transposition of great arteries today. Um, so just bear with me. Right, OK. So. Oops. Sorry about that. So what is TGA? Um, TGA basically is defined as transposition of great arteries where there is ventricular arterial discordance um, what it means is basically the iota, as you can see on this figure, the iota is rising from the um, right ventricle and uh, the uh, pulmonary trunk is arising from the left ventricle. Um, also, it can be associated with atrioventricular discordance, where the right atrium is connected to the left ventricle and the left atrium is connected to the right ventricle. So the pulmonary trunk is coming off the left ventricle and uh, the aortic trunk is coming off the right, ven right ventricle. Uh, so essentially, that is the congenitally corrected uh, uh, TGA. Um, so um, it was first kind, this, uh, this morphology was first described by Bailey in uh, uh, 1747. And then um, actually Farrick uh, coined the term uh, TGA. There's more to it about the history. I'm not going to go into it. Um, so let's talk a bit about uh, uh, how common is it. Um, it accounts to about 5% of all the congenital heart diseases, 10% um, of the neonatal cyanotic congenital heart diseases. And how often does it happen? About two to three uh, uh, 10,000 live births. And this, this figures are uh, within the Europe. Um, it's kind of slightly different uh, with the American figures anyway. Um, and 10% of these, uh, the kids with TGA, have got extra cardiac abnormalities. And most commonly, they are kidney uh, problems with the kidneys or cerebral malformations. And that's what has been described in the uh, literature. Um, males are more commonly affected than the females. Um, and I think about, uh, about 1.5 to 3 times more uh, than the females. Um, why this is, we don't know. And uh, it accounts to 35% uh, of all the conotrunkal abnormalities, uh, that being um, tetralogy of fallow, um, uh, DORV, so this, uh, that spectrum of uh, uh, conditions. So this is one of them. This is the extreme uh, part of it. So pathogenesis, basically looking at why this happens. Um, so before we kind of go into why TGA happens, I think it's worth having a little look at uh, what the normal cardiac uh, development is. So the heart develops um, from the mesocardium um, quite early, in the quite early stages, the crucial stages. I shall start uh, describing about what happens with the heart from uh, day 19, which is when the uh, embryonic uh, 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 endocardial heart tubes are formed. So this slide basically telling you that uh, the stages of the embryonic de development are you all still with me? It feels a bit strange that I'm kind of talking to the computer screen. We can hear you, everything is fine. Okay, thank you. Um, so it starts off with early uh, embryonic heart fields, then moves on to forming endocardial heart tubes, and cardiac looping happens, and then cardiac septation happens, followed by outflow tract development, and uh, um, of course, then the, it's the valves to kind of develop next, and then the, finally the conduction system. So the heart is fully up and running by about uh, day, day 50 to day 60, 
Um, the reason I put these two uh, arrow marks is this is where we are kind of interested in as, uh, um, you know, uh, with regards to development of a, a TGA. Um, I'm going to try. So this is basically the kind of the uh, time framework as to what happens during the development of heart. Uh, as you can see by the week one straight away, it starts off with uh, some uh, pre-cardiac cells in the primitive streak. And then, then uh, by about day 19, you can see that there are heart tube. Um, um, the heart tube starts forming and they start kind of folding into a midline. There are two heart tubes on either side of the embryo, and then that kind of fuses together to form a single heart tube. And the heart tube actually by day 22 kind of has got a cranial end and a caudal end, and the blood is pumping through the venous end and comes out of the arterial end. And I'm going to show the picture in the next slide anyway. Um, so, and then in between week four and week five is the heart looping that happens, and which is again very crucial for the development of uh, uh, TGA. Um, and as you can see by day 60, the heart is fully developed and uh, there is a conduction system in place. So this is what I was talking about, the heart tube, and you've got the sinus venosus end. This is where the venous blood kind of comes in, and this forms the primitive uh, atrium and has got a little canal that goes uh, into the primitive ventricle. And then there's a corner ventricular canal that leads into the bulbous cordis and, and then the tr truncus arteriosus. So it's in, essentially that forms the atrium, that forms the ventricles, um, uh, and a part of this as well forms the ventricles, and then that is the arteries, the great arteries. So I'm going to try and play this. Sorry, I've just moved on to kind of more relevant bits of uh, uh, development of TGA.
OK, so I thought that was very go going to be very helpful as to how we kind of uh, uh, about understanding about how uh, TGA kind of ends up happening. So sorry, I've got a few extra slides just in case that didn't work. So there are two uh, theories that have been postulated in development of uh, uh, TGA. One of them was by uh, Gould and Edwards. Uh, basically, that's called as the infundibula theory. So where there is the normal clockwise, uh, lack of normal clockwise rotation of the iota, if you're kind of looking at the heart from above, um, the rotation of the iota um, doesn't happen. Clockwise rotation of the uh, iota doesn't happen. And also they have postulated that uh, um, there is an abnormal uh, resorption or underdevelopment of the subpulmonary conus. Um, and, but uh, the a subiotic conus kind of completely uh, uh, persists and that leads to the development of uh, uh, um, TGA. Whilst this theory kind of explains quite very well the other um, uh, anomalies that are associated with TGA, like the BSD, um, and of course the, uh, the double outlet right ventricle. So they're all kind of the excess. Um, the TGA is an extreme uh, case of this. It's a spectrum. Uh, starting from VSD, going on to the TO, TO, um, uh, tetralogy of fallow, and then the double outlet right ventricle, and then uh, to, to the TGA spectrum. So this theory kind of explains that bit. Um, but however, you know, what, the way the kind of uh, the vessels are parallel in TGA, it it, it doesn't explain that. So the De La Cruz actually uh, postulated another theory. Uh, so basically they kind of, as you can see from the, uh, as you've seen the previous video, where you could see the uh, septum that kind of divides the uh, uh, truncus arteriosus, um, it kind of spirals out and, and that spiraling doesn't happen. Instead, the septum is more linear and that leads to the uh, development of uh, TGA. Um, so normally TGA is not kind of associated with uh, uh, any, it's uh, rarely associated with any kind of genetic syndrome, um, like you know Down syndrome being uh, most commonly associated with AV canal defects. Um, and uh, um, of course the tetralogy of fallow is associated with, uh, um, with DeGeorge. Um, so unlike uh, like that, TGA is not associated, but there's one condition that uh, uh, is associated with TGA, uh, which is basically called as the heter heterotaxy. So this is um, where the other organs in the body do not kind of rotate and exhibit the similar kind of left and uh, the right asymmetry, which all the uh, mammals exhibit with different organs in the body. So, um, so the heterotaxy syndrome is associated with cytosine versus dextrocardia and mesocardia. Now, one of the theories implicated in the development of uh, uh, TGA as well is the nodal gene. And this plays a very important role uh, in uh, bringing this left to right asymmetry and also kind of rotation as well. Um, and studies have shown that uh, Pits X2 mutation as well kind of leads to conotruncal abnormalities. And there's another gene called as a ZIK3, which is implicated in the heterotaxy. So except for heterotaxy, the rest of the things that I have listed on this uh, thing, um, on this slide, uh, is basically uh, associated more with TGA uh, along the DOAV spectrum um, and uh, uh, tetralogy follow, uh, follow like uh, 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 presentation. Um, so the risk factors that are associated uh, in development of uh, TGA include maternal di diabetes um, and of course maternal infections and ibuprofen. I was quite surprised to see ibuprofen was one of them. Anti-epileptics is very well known teratogen anyway and also the uh, um, you know, the hormonal therapy um, can cause um, um, TGA. Um, are you all with me? Uh, any questions so far? Hello? Uh, no questions. Carry on. Carry on. All good. Carry on. Yeah, it feels a bit weird because there's no, I can't see the response. Sorry. We're okay. listening. I'm listening. <laughs> okay. So with um, TTGA, so 
sorry. So, with TGA, the TGA is kind of now classified. I mainly classified this into three easy because it's easy to understand the uh, anatomy. Um, sorry, why the slides are not slipping anyway? It's fine. Uh, DTGA there uh, is the complete TGA where the inter interventricular septum is intact and 50% uh, of these condition is isolated. Then the TGA is associated with uh, different other cardiac abnormalities that includes VSD, PDA, or with um, and or uh, with the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction or left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Now in TGA, the right ventricular outflow out, uh, tract obstruction would include uh, your coctation and uh, hyperplastic, hyperplastic uh, arch, uh, that spectrum. And of course, the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction would include uh, your pulmonary tract uh, problems, pulmonary trunk problems, uh, which include uh, pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia. Now, 40% of the cases of TGA are associated with the uh, um, VSD. Um, now, the other entity is uh, LTGA, which is basically corrected TGA, and this accounts for about uh, 1% of um, the all the other uh, congenital heart diseases. Oops. So the pathophysiology uh, um, includes in DTGA, there are two parallel circuits. Um, the deoxygenated uh, bird continues to circulate systemically, as you've noted, the um, iota uh, comes off from the right ventricle, um, so basically, the blood uh, is received by the, the deoxygenated blood is received uh, by the right atrium into uh, by, by the IVC and SVC, and then moves through the um, mitral valve into the sorry tri tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then into the aorta. So the systemic circulation uh, uh, is deoxygenated. And then the uh, blood from the lungs come into the right uh, left atrium, goes into the left uh, ventricle, and then goes back again into the lungs because the pulmonary comes, uh, trunk comes off the um, left ventricle. So there is hyperpulmonary circuit. There are two independent parallel circulation, and and hence why if there is no mixing, there's you know it's uh, uh, quite le it is lethal to life anyway. So the mixing can happen at different levels, and that could be between the atrium, which is atrial septal defect or PFO, uh, and it could happen at the ventricular level uh, at the uh, ventricular septal defect, and it can happen at the great arteries where the PDA, there is a PDA connection. Now, without any of these connections, of course, the survival and, and that also kind of influences at what time and what kind of uh, um, how the baby is present as well. Now, as opposed to this, in the corrected TGA, um, because the left ventricle kind of gives off the, uh, the left ventricle is transposed onto, is onto the right ventricle and the aorta comes off uh, actually from um, the, sorry, the uh, pulmonary artery com uh, comes off from the left ventricle and is in line with the right atrium still the the the, uh, the normal circulation happens and um, oxygenated blood can get go, go across um, the body normally so the presentation doesn't necessarily happen in the neonatal period the presentation happens um, at the later in the life because the light ventricular uh, right ventricle cannot cope with the uh, uh, systemic pressure so this is a little uh, video to see what happens in the circulation because I can talk. So basically you can see that is the right ventricle and you can see the iota coming off there. So that is the deoxygenated blood from the right atrium coming on.
Sorry, having a bit of a problem with the working of this. So that's the aortic trunk, that's the pulmonary trunk. And the oxygenated blood coming into the right ventricle there. Okay, so this is the normal circulation, what happens in the normal heart, right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk, and then from into the left ventricle into the aorta. So this is our normal circulation. But in TGA, you can see the aorta is coming off from the right ventricle, and the blood goes, that is the deoxygenated blood going into the aorta to the rest of the system. And oxygenated blood coming from the right left atrium into the left ventricle and then goes into the pulmonary trunk. So that will be the problem with. So unless there is a mixing happening there, there or there, the survival is difficult. So <clears throat> how do these patients present? So it could be either antenatal diagnosis. These days we can kind of... Apparently there's still the pickup rate in the um, prenatal diagnosis is still 50%, but it does make a huge difference as to how we manage these kids after they're, you know, when they're born. Um, if we know that, yeah, if you know that the child has got a TGA, we can plan for, um, you know, uh, the emergency procedures that are needed and I shall discuss that in future. So... Postnatal diagnosis, again, uh, depends um, on how the child presents. Again, so the DTGA usually presents with um, um, cyanosis within the first 24 hours. That is because, and again, this is influenced by the amount of mixing that happens either at the atrial level or the ventricular level of the PTA. So the babies with intact ventricular septum um, again, kind of tend to be a lot more sicker and the atrial communication as well influences as to how sick they can be at the time of birth. So the second spectrum is actually TGA, we've got VSD. Um, so basically the, there's quite a lot of mixing happening between the right and the left side. These are a uh, uh, proportion of patients who actually present with uh, tachypnea or failure to type, and it might they might not necessarily be cyanosed, uh, depending on the amount of mixing that happens at the level, at the ventricular level. Um, but instead, they develop more signs of um, uh, pulmonary overcirculation, which develops over a period of few weeks. So they can present with the um, um, congestive cardiac failure like symptoms uh, failure to thrive in about three to six weeks of life and of course if left for a longer time they are the developer they are at the risk of developing pulmonary vascular uh, um, pulmonary vascular um, disease as well and um, then again there's another spectrum of uh, patients who develop uh, uh, outflow tract obstruction and the most common outflow tract obstruction is the, the, the pulmonary trunk which is left ventricular outflow tract in TGAs so they can have either pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary atresia and they again kind of present uh, like uh, babies with uh, uh, tetralogy of fallow so with cyanotic spells or um, uh, yeah and um, with cyanosis and of course cyanotic spells and uh, may develop depending on again how much of mixing is happening how much of pulmonary flow is there um, they can develop uh, uh, congestive cardiac uh, they can develop failure like symptoms like we talk about uh, the pink um, uh, fallows. So investigations wise, how are we going to investigate these uh, children? Um, so I'm going to kind of uh, stick to uh, strictly about the cardiac investigations. Um, so the chest X-ray is, uh, these are just, uh, the echocardiography is uh, the standard of uh, uh, initial investigations that helps us to prove one way or the other. But I'll come to that uh, later because I've got lots of pictures to show. 
Um, investigations wise, chest X-ray it does show uh, egg on a sling. That is partly because of the way the um, uh, arteries are arranged and uh, the, uh, both the atria are on either side. So the media standard seems to be quite uh, small and the heart itself looks quite big and which is why it gives the uh, appearance of an egg on a sling appearance. Um, and the electrocardiograph at the ECG, it shows it can show right axis deviation, anything between 90 degrees to 200 degrees, can show right ventricular hypertrophy. And in babies with the, um, VSD and PDA um, as well, can show, can exhibit biventricular hypertrophy changes on the ECG. Um, so, of course, CT scan and cardiac uh, uh, MRI are the other things to kind of, once we have done the echo, then to uh, get further more details about, say, coronary artery uh, um, morphology, if you're not able to pick it up on the echo, um, to delineate a more of a cardiac anatomy. Uh, so that's when the CT scan will, will be done. Again, as I said, with microscope, with the uh, uh, chromosomes and microarray, I think the ones with the um, uh, technology of Palo and uh, DRV kind of thing uh, need more of chromosomes because they are the ones that are commonly associated with the uh, 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 Dijon syndrome and uh, uh, trisomy 8 and 18 are as well kind of implicated. So, moving further about echo. So what are we doing looking uh, uh, when we're doing echocardiography on these uh, uh, children? So as I said uh, 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 in my talk earlier, then the TGA is associated with uh, uh, heterotaxy syndrome and problems with the situs. So we kind of look for the situs um, when we're doing the echo. And then we're looking at the, whether there is an ASD present or not, whether there's VSD, then again, uh, basically looking at the missing various mixing levels as well and coronary artery pattern and what is the outflow tract pattern like and uh, the relation between the aortic and pulmonary val valve as well because these are the things that have kind of uh, got implications as to when and how quickly do we get into the management of it uh, management of the condition itself and of course it's got implications about how the surgeons manage it uh, on the table as well um, so subcostal views, we look for again site is that we're looking at the ASD and the size of it, the flow across the ASD, and then again looking at the VSD and the size of it. And to define the ventricular morphology, um, obviously, uh, you know, CCTGA is the one that's kind of associated with the left ventricle being on the right. Earth. So we need to identify that. Um, and then, of course, looking at uh, the subcostal views also shows the parallel great vessels. Normally, uh, on a normal cardio echocardiogram, you see the, uh, the great vessels actually crisscrossing um, or crossing over. But uh, on in TGA, you can see them being parallel. So that is a picture of showing um, um, that is the normal situs. You can see the aorta there and the IVC on to the right, IOTO on to the left there. But in situs inverses, you can see the IOTO there and left, uh, uh, IVC on to the um, left. So this is a video that shows the ASD communication. So there we go. With a left to right floor there. So subcostal views, what we were talking about uh, being the arteries being parallel. So that's the right ventricle giving out a parallel. Normally, you don't see this kind of pattern. And in the parasternal long axis views, uh, we look at uh, the parallel. Um, uh, the vessels are parallel. I have got a video that I'll show you in the, in, uh, in the next slide. But here you can see the left atrium here goes into the left ventricle and then goes into the pulmonary artery here and you can even see the branching of the pulmonary artery here and that's the right ventricle I can't see the right uh, of course uh, the outflow from that so this is one of our patients actually and um, so that is the left atrium sorry and that's the left ventricle and that you can see both the vessels. Normally, you don't see this in uh, in the normal uh, echocardiogram. You don't see this uh, picture, this kind of a picture. 
You can see both. That's the O. So the next. The next is um, actually this is the Palestine short axis view where you can see the iota here. This is a normal, this is a normal uh, echocardiogram, normal uh, uh, echocardiogram on a normal child. This is the uh, parasternal short axis view. And um, that is the RVOT. You can see the pulmonary artery there in the iota, and you can see the relation between the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary valve is there and the iota is there. So as opposed to in a TGA, that is the aortic valve, and that's the other thing in the uh, parasternal short axis view as well uh, is um, you don't see both these valves in the short, short axis parasternal view in a normal uh, scan. So normally there's the aortic valve, and as I showed in the previous picture, you just see the right outflow tract rather than the valve itself. As you can see here, you can see both them. And um, the aortic valve is almost anterior. So let me play this. And how do I identify that? This as a aortic valve, you can see the you can see the coronary arteries there. So again, we're looking at the coronary artery pattern as well, uh, because that does have an effect on the prognosis of, uh, um, you know, following the surgery. Uh, so different kind of patterns have been tested, just as a diagram to show. I think uh, the ones with a single ostium, like single coronary artery, um, and the ones which in the, which go inside the uh, uh, cardiac muscle itself, they are uh, associated with a significant uh, mortality uh, during the switch operation. So coming to the apical view, what are we looking at? We are assessing the function, and of course we are looking at uh, the valvular uh, uh, function as well. Um, and of course you're looking at the outflow tract. And this picture does show that is the left ventricle showing off the pulmonary trunk, which is kind of branching there. So again, TGA is very commonly associated with VCs. We are, as we've discussed, about 40% of the TGA do have a VSD, associated VSD. And when we look back into the development as well, uh, the septum, um, the spiral septum contributes to the perimembranous bit of the uh, VSD. So a malalignment of this ends up kind of creating a VSD in TGA, and that explains as to why we see that very often. And this is a, uh, um, is a parasternal long axis view where you can see the left, left atrium, left ventricle, and the, of course the MPA is coming off the left ventricle there, and you can see the uh, VSD. And then moving on to CCTGA, what happens? Um, so you need to kind of uh, describe uh, the left ventricular, the way you identify this uh, CCTGA is by describing uh, your looking at the ventricular morphology. The right ventricle has got a moderator band here. And of course, the left ventricle, which I've not been able to get a picture of, uh, uh, does show the papillary muscles as well. Um, so that, uh, that is on the parasternal uh, axis view. And you can see here uh, the pulmonary trunk coming off the left uh, ventricle and iota coming off the right ventricle. So management wise, um, what are we going to do? So in a neonate with an intact ventricular septum with little uh, mixing of blood at the atrial level, they present quite uh, uh, significantly cyanotic. So they end up, they end up you, you, you manage them with the ABC approach, then um, assess their, uh, their uh, acid-base status, 
So basically doing a capillary gas, hypoglycemia, looking for hypoglycemia, correct all the electrolytes as well, and start them on a prostaglandin infu infusion to keep the patent ductus or tear or open and move them over for an emergency palliative surgery that includes the septostomy uh, to keep the to widen the uh, atrial communication. Now I've just look at kind of concise my uh, um, surgical management because I'm sure we are going to have a, a talk uh, in future about how how the, they're going to be managed surgically, and I let my surgical colleagues do that. Um, so surgically, the simple TGA um, usually gets corrected um, if there is good mixing and the child is stable and the art atrial uh, um, arterial switch operation happens within the first uh, first to the, is recommended between first and the third week. We normally tend to do within the second week, don't we? Um, and the TGA with PDA, VSD, and mild PS again, um, if they are stable, then you know you do the. Um, they, they, there's a mixing here, so um, we just kind of do it between the first and the third week. And TGA with VSD and severe PS, again, there are three options. So initially do a palliative surgery where they, we've created a sh shunt so that uh, the blood flow, uh, there's blood flow to the systemic as well as uh, uh, the um, pulmonary area. And then followed by VSD with a rastally procedure or a REV procedure or a nickel. I'm not going to go into the details of what these procedures are. Um, TGA with large, again, with large VSD and subbiotic stenosis, they tend to have a BT shunt and then a damus, uh, um, a sanodamus, a damus shunt and a VSD and RVP a conduit at a later date when they're about one to two years old. So complications following the surgeries, you do, uh, you do expect them to have arrhythmias and uh, you anticipate obstruction and leaks through the uh, battle. They've had a rastery procedure and pulmonary artery stenosis, and of course, coronary, coronary artery stenosis issues with the aortic root dilatation and regurgitation. And this is what we kind of look for uh, in monitoring them long term. So in summary, TGA is a quite a severe is a severe congenital heart disease due to a problem with the spiral migration and all ventricular looping. The management depends on the level of mixing. It could end up uh, it could be a palliative procedure like a atrial septostomy or a shunt, depending on how soon they are pre uh, present. And of course, the other things that we need to be aware of the associated uh, anomalies and uh, coronary uh, pattern as well. And antenatal diagnosis definitely has reduced uh, the mortality quite significantly because we can anticipate this and arrange for the child to be transferred across the tertiary unit as soon as possible to enable the septostomy. So that's my talk. Thank you very much. And if there's any kind of questions, I'm happy to take. Hello? I can't, I can't hear you. It's, it's me, I'm hearing, hearing myself bad. bad. <laughs> anyway, Vidya, thank you very much. It's a nice talk. But uh, one thing uh, we missed to discuss today is uh, in associated anomalies, TGA can have isolated coaptation. Okay. And TGA can have arch abnormalities and importantly, toxic being anomaly. That's something we, we didn't touch today. Okay. Um, and the second thing is um, about antenatal pickup. Yeah. Um, I I think maybe it's, it's since you raised it, it may be a good idea to do an audit in our department and then see how many of our TGAs are picked up antenatally. Well, because I think it's pretty high. Yeah, I think I've got the data at the moment, really. So we can kind of you put have. it in the formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what what is our pickup? Sorry. What is our pickup rate? Antenatal pickup. No, I have not looked into the data. I'm just collecting the data at the moment. So I guess once I've kind of analyzed, I can kind of give that uh, uh, yeah feedback. That's good. Thank and you. So otherwise, very nice. Any other questions?
Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.